Well, good evening, and thank you so much for all being here tonight. And thank you, Brad, thank you, Wendy, for inviting me to be here, and the gala committee for organizing this beautiful evening. I also, like many of you here tonight, have a personal reason, of course, for being here, and that is to honor my parents, Henry and Vivian Friesen. Dad was born in Russia. He came to Canada as a boy. My mother was born here in Canada, and together they spent their lives farming and building a family just outside of Winnipeg. Both of them, as you know from the documentary, developed dementia, and our family has slowly watched them slip away. Watched, as so many of you have, with your loved ones, their essential selves slowly being erased. And we as a family found ourselves mourning while they're still living. My father began to decline first, and looking back now, I suppose he really started to show signs when he was in his 70s. He was the kind of guy who rarely got sick. He hated going to the doctor. He loved to be outdoors working. He hated to have anyone tell him what to do, including my mother. <laughs> he didn't have much use for coming into the city. In fact, he used to tell us that the only way he was going to leave that farm was in a pine box. Sadly, he never got that wish. Dad died in October in a nursing home in Winnipeg. He and my mother lived in the same nursing home, and, and Mom is still there. I saw her on the way here today. And when, when Dad was alive, they'd have these kind of occasional flashes of recognition. After all those years of marriage, you, you'd think we'd hoped that somehow having them in the same place would give them a connection, but it was so rare. It had dimmed to almost nothing. Mom would sometimes go down the hall into Dad's room and look at him and say, Henry, you need to get your teeth fixed. <laughs> Just random things like that. Yeah. There's nothing funny, of course, about Alzheimer's disease and dementia. It can make some people angry. It can make some people mean. It can alter personalities. We all know that. We cry more than we laugh about it, mostly, right? I mean, that little clip from the documentary, real downer, sorry about that. But, <laughs> you know, dementia can also make some people sweet and funny, too. So what if we try to strip away the sadness? And I know this is what care workers do in the nursing homes. They try to get past the sadness and the lack of hope and see glimmers of life and fun. My first encounter with dementia was when I was a young reporter, I think I was in my 20s, and I was doing a story on the first day center that had opened in this town to give respite care to carers who, you know, spend 24 hours a day, seven days a week looking after their loved one with dementia. And, and this day center offered a place that they could send their loved one and they'd get a little bit of a break. So we were doing a story on it, I got a tour of the place and <clears throat> spoke to the staff, and there was one gentleman sitting at a table. He was very well dressed, he was very charming, and he called me over and he asked me some very friendly questions, and we were, had him on camera and everything, and he said, you know, how are you, the usual things, where are you from? And then he said, how would you like to take your clothes off? <laughs> in my 20s, I was just so embarrassed. Now at age 51, I'd probably be quite flattered. But <laughs> My mom used to make me laugh too, not, not for such <laughs> kind of things like that, but as she was losing her memory, she was losing her inhibitions too. She used to be very careful about her appearance, about saying the right things to people and about behaving correctly but she kind of lost her sense of perspective. And we would be out having coffee somewhere, and she would often lean over and say, look at that woman over there. She looks so old. She must be in her 80s. And I'd say, Mom, you're in your 80s. And she'd be, look at me totally shocked and say, really? And I'd say, yes, you are. <laughs> it was, you know, it made me think in her heart and in her mind's eye, she was a young woman. And initially, I thought I should correct her and point it out that she's, she's old too. And then I thought, no, I'm not going to anymore. Let her believe she's in her 20s. Let her be thrilled with that. Dad, too, held on to his sparkle for a long time after his memory faded. He had the most beautiful blue eyes and a real charming personality. And the staff at the nursing home used to 
put his wheelchair near the nursing station because they liked him. They wanted to chat with him. They wanted to hear his jokes and his wisecracks. I think Alzheimer's kind of vies uh, with cancer now as the number one grim reaper. Though the lucky ones can be cured of cancer, there is no cure for Alzheimer's and dementia. I know it's too late to help my parents, too late for hundreds of thousands of people, but I think about the next generation, my son's generation, and that's why we are all here. And I pl applaud all of you for being here, for doing your part. Because as Wendy said, research really is the key. It is so important to keep raising money, to keep raising awareness. And the news of West Can's investment here in Manitoba today is amazing. We need to tackle dementia the same way that we took on HIV. We need to keep pushing, we need to keep talking. We need to replace fear of this disease with hope. In the spirit of my dad, in their memory, and the memory of all of the loved ones that all of you love, who have found themselves trapped on this one-way street called dementia. Let's have fun tonight, let's sparkle a little, and let's raise a glass to a future free of this disease. Thank you.